Hi everyone, Comic Reviewer here, this time reviewing on issue 4 of Star Wars Dark Times. Now as you know, yeah, Star Wars Dark Times was part of the original Star Wars continuity that took place after episode 3 and was meant to feature the Jedi Jenna who would be like having his own band of misfits, almost like Star Wars Rebels. And yeah, we're now on to issue 4. So, let's get on with the story. It starts off with Bomo saying, My Rissa dead? Rissa gone? Where? The slavers, they said they were taking Rissa for private sale. But Nessa fought so hard. The gods, they killed her. And we do kind of see how, yeah, Jenna and the others do have to try and calm Bomo down. And Jenna saying, No, no, you don't have to return to the ship, all of you. And we do kind of see how, yeah, tries to kind of calm the situation down. Knowing that, yeah, if they all go together, it could cause more suspicions. So we kind of see how, yeah, Jenna takes Bomo's necklace that has the hologram of his daughter and, and tries to find any other info and of course it's kind of clear that one of the shipmates know who Jenna is and we do kind of see one of them saying General what about us and we do kind of see how Jenna has to kind of explain to them that he doesn't have an army and can't rescue all of them but tells them to stay put there is going to be hope someday and you can tell Jenna knows this is going to be hard on him knowing that they wanted someone to save them but it wasn't going to be him. Meanwhile, on the planet New Plato, we see how the clone troopers and that are going back onto the Star Destroyers, and we kind of see how, yeah, the clone troopers saying, you had an interceptor? Ah, the, the 203rd did. He or she stole a Nimbus, created a version that allows almost all the grounded civilian ships to escape. And we do kind of see how, yeah, they're going to be kind of probably handling new missions now. And we do kind of see how, yeah, Fader and a group of moths coming with him. And I like how Vader in this one is just kind of like keeping calm and just kind of thinking to himself. I think what Dark Times always got right at is showing Vader starting to regret his actions and showing hints that the old Anakin is still there. Something that I think... Disney and Marvel been trying to do with the whole Enforced Redemption arc, which in my opinion is one of those tropes that nobody should do. And we do kind of see how, yeah, the other shipmates have to keep Bomo under, under control and not let his emotions crowd his judgement. And we do kind of see how, yeah, they're kind of waiting for Jenna. And we do see how Jenna knows about, about Bomo's daughter's um, buyer, who is a guy called Mio, who basically sold off her to another client. And we do kind of see him entering the penthouse. And as soon as he goes in, we see him saying, Huh? Not a word, Mio. Who are you? What do you want? Got my guards are just outside the door. And if you call to them, you'll be dead before they enter. The morning you sold a younglin. I saw a lot of younglings. She's a Norsean. Her name is Ressa. And we kind of see how, yeah, after he insults Bomo's wife, he gives him a good whacking. And he points out about one of his clients who buys a, sl a slave every once in a while. And we do kind of see how, yeah, he tries to kind of calm the situation. And this is where Jenna knows that if he kills Mio, this is him breaking away from the Jedi path. And yeah, this is him regretting it, but knowing he has to do it. And I kind of like this more because unlike Anakin and the Jedi who just kind of brush it off, this is just Jenna knowing that, yeah, he's crossed a line that he's not coming back from. And we do kind of see how, yeah, due to him being the bottom barrel of, of the sort of Jedis, this is him trying to use his own elements and, yeah, tries to get out but also having to kind of use whatever elements he can. And after in, after breaking into a bathhouse, we see him trying to escape, trying to make a break for it, and we do kind of see how, yeah, Milo's gods say, where'd he go? 
uh, his footprints in here, right here. And of course, we kind of see how, yeah, Kenna and Nat manages to kind of get back to his team and sets them up with new coordinates. And yeah, we do kind of see how one of the shipmates find it a bit suspicious, how he always seems to have good luck. But we do kind of see how, yeah, he Kenna still tries to process what he's just done. And yeah, they manage to to get away from the slave planet. And after Jenks tries to talk with him, he heads into his quarters. And this is what I liked about original stuff. There was no real enforced stories. This is just kind of a guy who's just basically broken a sort of sacred vow. And this is him thinking that, yeah, this is not going to be easy now. Knowing that the Four of the Jedi Order and Order 66 is going to make a lot of Jedi do questionable things. And this is the story. I think, in my opinion, Issue 4 is definitely readable. Because, one, Jenna definitely is the weakest in the barrel of the Jedi Order. But, yeah, it shows that he can actually use his own elements, then using the Force. And I do kind of see him as the original Freddie Pr Prince Jr. character from Star Wars Rebels. And I think if Star Wars used Dark Times as their own original story, I think there's only one actor I could definitely see playing Jenna. I think I could definitely see the actor who plays Superman in Man of Steel, or yeah, I could definitely see the actor who plays um, the, the guy from Twilight and the Batman, Jenna and see him as this bottom barrel Jedi trying to go the distance. But I think this issue definitely deserves a thumbs up. Still good and still readable. So, comic reviewer here, signing out.